Okay guys, so we are going to move on from upper and lower body to core now. And we are going to cover different variations of crunches, um, especially with an emphasis on keeping your back comfortable, your lower back. We are going to do um, a V-sit, different variations of a V-sit, variations of a plank, and different ways that you can do back extensions. Keep in mind when you're doing core exercises that your comfort is paramount. So if something doesn't feel great for your lower back or for your neck, um, please find a different modification or just don't do it. Um, it's not worth straining yourself and having days of discomfort as a consequence. Um, so feel free to reach out to somebody. Um, <clears throat> somebody with power over Parkinson's, uh, if you would like to get in touch with me about um, something that feels uncomfortable, I'm happy to take a look real quick um, to give you some suggestions on what might be going on to fix your posture um, or to just give you something different. So hopefully though, the modifications I'm giving here will address it up front. So let's get going. You need a chair and a mat. Now last time I had my swivel chair in the upper body video. I would not suggest um, uh, anything that moves. Try to find something that's stable. Even just an upholstered chair is great. Go ahead and lie down onto your mat <clears throat> with the chair close to your body and slowly lift your legs up into, into sort of a 90 degree angle at the knee. A little higher, a little lower is fine. We are gonna start flat on the mat. And again, knees are roughly a 90 degree angle Hands are going to come behind the head to help support the neck, and we're going to exhale to do a crunch up. We're going to squeeze low in the abdomen at the top of the movement and come back down. Now, I, I emphasize squeezing actively because this is how you get a lot of the work out of the routine. It's not going to do very much if you're just throwing your body haphazardly up and down. That's going to end up straining your neck more than it is working your core. So with every lift or with every crunch, I want you to exhale and try to squeeze tight here. This positioning for the lower body is really nice for the lower back. It takes a lot of pressure off the back. We can step up the intensity um, and take it up a modification here, modification level here by lifting one leg as we go. Okay, so exhaling and crunching here. We can add in an oblique crunch to that leg while it's lifted. Again, exhaling as we crunch, up and down. Exhale up, inhale down. Same thing, we can do it the other side, crunching up. And we can add in that oblique work here. Now, you'll notice that I'm not pulling on my neck. I'm not yanking here, pulling hard on my neck, straining it as I go. I'm trying to really keep all of the work down low in the core. When you cast your gaze towards your knees, that also helps to keep the neck in the proper alignment without straining it much. <clears throat> From there, if one leg off feels comfortable, you can take both legs off. So it's exhaling up and down. And here, we can add obliques. And if you get fatigued, all you simply have to do is lower your legs back down. Okay, so this gives us lots of modifications with the chair, one leg, both legs, anything with regular crunches and oblique crunches, plenty to switch up between. And there's a big difference between having a leg lifted here versus supported here. But the, the comfort of the chair is right there, so you have something to return to if you find yourself not feeling great with the legs lifted. <clears throat> okay, we can also do isometrics, so we crunch up and we just hold. If it feels more comfortable, you can assume sort of a Pilates type position. This is the position that's used for the 100, the upper body position for the 100 exercise. But here you can just extend the arms long, toes pointing in the same direction, or fingers pointing in the same direction as your toes. Eyes are looking towards the knees to try to avoid straining through the neck. And just holding here can be a nice, good challenge and a way to build your core um, and prepare it for plank. So those are different ways that you can modify crunches. There are plenty more modifications we could review, but that, um, that is a good start for today. <clears throat> and now we're going to move on to V-sit. So V-sit can be done um, from a chair. And I'll scoot my chair a little more forward to try to demonstrate this. So 
It's gonna be a little hard to see, but you can start with your feet flat on the ground and lean back on a diagonal angle without holding on to the side. So you're leaning back on a diagonal angle, engaging through the core. You could even just put your hands up like this. This is a great way to get started and to take a little pressure off of your lower back and while also engaging through the core. A V-sit is simply holding. It's an isometric exercise typically, and that means that the core is contracting. You're working um, a lot through what's called the transverse abdominis that sits across the core, almost like a corset or a weight belt that heavy weightlifters wear. Whatever you want, need to think of it as, that's about where it is. Okay? Fairly simple, but actually quite hard if you do it the right way. We want to keep a flat posture throughout the exercise. On the mat, go down this way. On the mat, a V sit with our, hand, our feet on the ground is going to look like this. Same thing, we're leaning back, holding tight through the core, trying not to hold our breath, keep the breath going. And it looks really simple, but it's actually kind of challenging when you, when you really hit the right spot. You can lean back more or less according to your degree of comfort. If you need, you can even start by holding onto the knees with your hands. If you feel like that's okay, you could really throw your body way back to the point where your abs start to shake a little bit and you really work them out so long as you're keeping a flat posture um, in your back. So that is one variation. Another, if you want to step up the intensity, is to take the feet off of the ground. You'll notice that a lot of my modifications, be it for lower body, upper body, or core, involve a, a, some degree of balance. <laughs> so here, clearly, we're having to balance using the core. Okay, so that's another V-sit with the feet off of the ground. And then lastly, oh, and I should say that to build to that, you could also start with just one leg lifted because that will, that will incrementally challenge the core too <clears throat> before you get to this position. And then lastly, we can add a twist with the V-sit. So you come back into that nice V-sit posture, feet 